Welcome to Self Care Tips. I am Irene Jaroge, and today we're looking at the most important issue of time management. How do you manage your time? We've all heard the saying that time and tide waits for no man and no woman. Manage time so that you can get a lot done. And there's so many ways to do this, it is not difficult. Once you begin and get into the system, get used to it, you'll find yourself accomplishing a lot each day with just a few simple measures of time management. Stand by for more. Have you ever learned about how to set your body clock? And did you know that you can actually reset your body clock? Within 14 days, you will be able to wake up two hours earlier and do a lot more during that time. All you need to do is to set your alarm clock for two hours earlier in the morning. For example, if you usually wake up at 7, start setting it for 5 a.m. And then make sure by 5 a.m. you are awake and ready to start the day. Don't linger on in bed. Get up, get started. Within 14 days, your body will have changed automatically waking up at 5 a.m. Start planning your next day in the evening. Get everything that you need and think about it mentally. Think about the things that you need to do the next day. And then, of course, give room for emergencies. Anything can happen. Here is a checklist of some of the things you should cut out and rule out in order to avoid wasting time. The first one, and we all know that, is the phone. Do you know you can actually spend three hours a day on Facebook and other social media posts just reading and trying to look at things that are not even useful to you, try and cut them out as much as possible. Another thing that you need to do is also to stop wasting time on a lot of TV. Of course, programs like self-care tips are helpful, but there are others that are really not. And finally, we all know about procrastination. The more you postpone doing things, the more time you will waste. So remember, procrastination is a thief of time. Do it now and do it today. This has been Self-Care Tips on Time Management. I am Irene Joroge. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 or 0734-780-124. A true love in which family will be the main hardship to achieve happiness. Well, I understand it, Mom, but I don't want to break up with Adrian. Paulina will have to confront her own father. And Adrian will suffer due to his sister Julieta's obsession. No! Not with her! No! Not with her! No! Paulina is the woman I truly no, love! No. But regardless of jealousy and intrigue... Karen, open the door, please! They will fight for their love until the end. to three months before the general election. Good evening and thank you for joining us. And of course, our special segment, Kenya Decides, begins tonight. 
our reporter and our co-anchor, Safi Cheng, Cheng, yes, will she's, be hosting. She'll be hosting a number of people. The topic of discussion tonight is Kenya Decides. And uh, the, pro the program show is called Kenya Decides. The topic of discussion, media security and elections. And, elections and our hosts, she has a panel, Victor Buire, who's a director of media training and development from the Media Council of Kenya. We have Eric Oduor, who's the secretary general, Kenya Union of Journalists, and Hugh Tony Rungu. Amnesty International Executive Director. We will be crossing over to her uh, right after this live broadcast. Absolutely. And she'll be coming to us live from Norfolk Hotel. Hotel. That's right across Broadcasting House. But let's take a look first at our headline stories tonight. A nation in danger. Interior CS warns the next parliament could be in the hand of rocketeers. ODM prized certificates, intrigues and chaos play out in Kisumu nominations. Plus, seeking more funds, head teachers want capitation increased or be allowed to hike school fees. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Tom Boyer. My name is Purity Museo and Wangeshi is our sign language interpreter tonight at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity and as Tom Museo at Tom Boyer to for the hashtag is Prime Edition. Remember tonight our special election coverage our segment Kenya Decides begins tonight with Safin Aching Oma and we talk about media security and, and elections. elections. Yeah. And she's hosting Eric Victor Buire, who's a director at MCK. We have Eric Odua, who's the Secretary General of Kenya Union of Journalists, as well as Hilton Rungu, the Executive Director of Amnesty International. You don't want to miss that right at the tail end of this live broadcast. But first things first, our headline story, the government has expressed concern over the caliber of leaders to be elected in the next parliament owing to increasing incidents of money laundering witnessed as the country approaches the general election. Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi said such practices threaten national security. Irene Muchuma opens our coverage with that report. The Anglican Church of Kenya bishops and clergy five-day conference began in Nairobi on Tuesday, focusing on the role of the church in elections. The Chief Guest Interior Cabinet Secretary, Dr. Fred Matiangi, was accompanied by his communication counterpart, Joe Musheru, Inspector General of Police, Hilary Mtiambai, and Attorney General Paul Kihara, who stated the role the agencies will play. We have seen you know, political leaders moving around, massing groups of people, and giving them money. Some of them are actually caught on tape asking one inch to queue and they're just giving them money to attend meetings or to do certain things. Is it possible we find a way of being able to sanitize most of this information that is out there so that we have you speak even more when truth is actually not being told? In his address, Matiangi cautioned the electorate over the increasing cases of voter bribery and commercialization of politics, terming it a threat to national security. These people are the only ones who have that kind of money that they will give around like that. They will be in our elective institutions. They will be writing laws for you. And they will allow themselves to allow that gambling and all those things to thrive in this country. He reckoned that the threat of poverty in parliamentary democracy and county assemblies business by having people with questionable integrity is real. You drive public money in that state you eat food bought by that public state that you are condemning. You, you live in a house of that state. When does it become deep? And deeper than this. He challenged politicians to address the dangerous link between corruption and election outcomes on the insecurity in Marsabit. Matiangi said adequate security will be deployed to quell clashes that are pitting communities against each other. The things I have heard and collected from people in that county are not spoken anywhere in this country. You must assist us and this country 
in keeping the flock together towards the salvation that has been declared by Christ's resurrection. And we say we are not going to shy away from what's happening in the public, we'll engage. Irene Mchuma Odim, the Prime Edition. To some politics, Deputy President Dr. William Ruto has assured the charge of a free operational space if he is elected as president in the August 9th poll. Ruto says the charge plays a critical role in the country's governance, which calls for a safeguarding of worship. Ruto, who was in Nyeri Loud at the UDA party for conducting what he termed as fair nominations. Here is more with John Jacob Curia. The deputy president was in Nyeri County to condole the family of Kikuyu MP Kimani Shunga, who lost his mother-in-law. Ruto sought to assure the church that he would protect the freedom of worship in the country in the backdrop of calls to regulate the church. Na musiwe na wasiwasi kwamba kuna mtu yeyote atakuja kufunga kazi ya kanisa. Haiwezekani. It is not possible. The deputy president called on Nyeri residents to support his presidential bid as his administration would prioritize the expansion of the economy to cushion the poor. Wa Kenya hawana shida na wa Kenya wengine wa kutoka jamii zingine. Ile tatizo kubwa tuko nayo ni tatizo ya uchumi. Na tumesema uchaguzi wa mwaka huu ni uchaguzi ambao tutautumia kushughulikia uchumi wa taifa letu la Kenya. His ally is driving up support for Ruto and the UDA party, claiming it had conducted credible nominations devoid of interference. Watu wengine ambao hata hawakudhubutu kufanya any of their preliminaries, party preliminaries wameanza kutulaumu ati oh tulifanya tulifanya na hawa I was telling the deputy president Asante ulitupeleka uda. In the meantime Naivasha MP Jane Kihara will now fly the party's flag after she was issued with the party's nomination certificate. This after the UDA Disputes Tribunal overturned former MP John Kihage's win and found that Kihara had beaten Kihage with a single vote. Kihara has also in the meantime blamed Nakuru Senator and gubernatorial aspirant Susan Kihika, accusing her of meddling with the nominations. Kama naomba kura za Naivasha, ama za county, awachane kushika yayote mkono ndio sisi zote tumtafutie kura lakini akitonyesha kuna yule anata anapendelea ujue wengine hatutamfanyia kazi the party's national election board is in the meantime preparing to conduct repeat nominations in various parts of the country wednesday and thursday after conducting nominations in nandi hills constituency in nandi county tuesday <laughs> meanwhile a section of aspirants in the moses courier led chama chakazi have protested alleged blackmail and underhand dealings that have seen some of them lose out on the nomination certificates. Police officers had to be called in to diffuse similar intentions, threatening to explode to violence at party headquarters. The party has, however, assured aspirants that it will issue nomination certificates by the 28th. I want to make an assurance that we shall give every person their certificate, more so those ones who they, they are not contesting with anyone. Isn't it? Most of you here are not contesting with anyone. Former Kambu Governor William Kabogo has dispelled rumors that he is being offered a cabinet secretary slot by the Kenya Kwanza coalition so as to drop his bid for governorship. Speaking Tuesday afternoon after being cleared by the Tujibebe wa Kenya Party Elections Board to run for governorship, Kabogo said he was ready for a face-off with his competitors regardless of their party affiliations. I am not employable, if that answers your question. I cannot be hired for an 8 to 5 job. I can only be hired by Wanjiko through the ballot. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. Wiper Democratic Movement has settled on former Kitui Governor Julius Makau Malombe as its candidate for the Kitui gubernatorial contest. In August 9th general election, the party nominated Malombe through a consensus process that it says has taken over two weeks between the former governor and immediate former Kenya ambassador to Uganda, Kema Kilonzo, spearheaded by leader, the party leader Stephen Kalonzo Musioka Gishuki Washira reports. Former Kitui governor Julius Malombe will fly the Waipa Democratic Party ticket 
In the Kitui gubernatorial contest in the August 9th general election, Malombe was awarded the ticket after consensus with his competitor, former Kenya ambassador to Uganda, Kema Kilonzo, spearheaded by the Waipa party leader, Kalonzo Musyoka. And the decision was that this uh, ticket should be given to Governor uh, Dr. Julius Malombe. And NEC unanimously, actually they were clapping, unanimously adopted. Deputy Speaker Jesse Kambalu also got the direct ticket to vie for Kibwezi East constituency on Waipa ticket after her competitor William Malile agreed to support her bid. Meanwhile, a section of Kajiado Central constituency residents want ODM party to include the constituency in the nominations slated for Wednesday. ODM will be undertaking nominations in Kajiado North and Kajiado East constituencies. The party has already issued a direct ticket to Elijah Memusi for the Kajiado Central parliamentary seat. Ya kwamba wana matapato north. Sisi hatuna wasiwasi. Tumejitarisha, tumepiga kampeni. Na tumeingia mashinani kabisa. Tumetafuta kura. Lakini haita kuwa haki. Kama atutapata, eh, atutapata mchujo huu. Amba uliwe kwa tarehe shirini. Mwezu wane uh, uh, mba tulikuwa tunautarajia kuwa ni kesho Tumesikia kwamba kutakuwa na nomination kwa maana jana ili postiwa kwamba zile vitu ambayo ama zile places ambao kutakuwa na nomination Kama pale Kajado East, Kajado North na Kajado West Lakini Kajado Central, particularly Matapato North Hakuna nomination ambayo iliweza kugazetiwa jana Na kwa sababu ya hiyo Iyo tunanyimwa haki yetu kama wakazi wakazi Baba, you know very much that we love you so much. We love ODM. We are kindly requesting this. That let the people of Matapato elect their preferred candidate. Meanwhile, ODM Secretary General Edwin Sifuna now says constituent parties in the Azimiola Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party will field candidates in Nairobi County. I think there is agreement that let everybody field their own candidates because it is going to be very difficult to uh, reach consensus on uh, who drops out for whom. So in the interest of uh, saving all of us uh, unnecessary tears, uh, let every political party, because you see from the side of ODM, we are very confident because of the work we have done uh, uh, as a party, uh, building this party and ensuring that it has uh, support to the grassroots and to have structures all the way to the polling stations, that in fact ODM candidates will do very well in majority of the areas in, uh, in Nairobi. Visho Kiwashira, Prime Edition. Let's now move away from politics. Secondary school head teachers are calling for an upward review of the capitation fund to help meet the demand for quality education across the country. Kenya Secondary Schools Heads Association Chair Alfred Indimoli says the 22,244 22, shillings allocated to each student per year hardly meets their budget. Here is more with Anburo. Head teachers are meeting in Mombasa for an annual conference convened to take stock of the gains made in the achievement of quality basic education across 10,413 secondary schools in the country. On Tuesday, the head teachers want the capitation fund reviewed upwards. There should be an increase in capitation. An increase in the figures that we are working on is showing an increase of about 28%. And the mathematicians here are saying that is just about 6,000 shillings to raise. Uh, and maybe the figure will reach 30,000 uh, per child. That, the principal scale, will be comfortable. Kesha Chairman Alfred Indimuli says parents must do more in facilitating schools to help bridge financial gaps. The fees payable by parents in boarding schools should also be looked at. Because for the last 10 years, the price of food and all other bonding related facilities has gone up. Here, a proposal of about 13% has been made. Basic Education Principal Secretary Julius Juan assured the principals that the ministry will be releasing over 60 billion shillings to schools next week. There is over 60 billion shillings for secondary schools the next time. And this is a week, it's not more than a week, 
other than four we open and over two million shillings for primary schools. So as we open, there will be money in the schools and there will be circulars explaining how that money is being used. School principals are proposing a raft of improvement to the curriculum, among them the introduction of laptop project for secondary schools. I know the laptop project uh, that started off in the primary uh, should have continued and it is a secondary so that we are able to have a budget that can be used in schools. So that we stem down the discipline that we are always seeing with students sneaking mobile phones. We know that it is uh, badly used during exams. But then can we get a gadget that students can use in schools and only allow them to access education materials? For Prime Edition from Mombasa County, I am Anburu. To the COVID situation now, the lifeline of the 1 million Johnson & Johnson vaccine doses, which had been projected to expire by the 15th of April, has been reviewed. The chair of the COVID Vaccines Task Force, Dr. Willis Halwale, Halwale, says that although the World Health Organization has increased the lifeline of the said vaccines from 4.5 months to 11 months, the Kenya Medical Research Institute is conducting research to ascertain whether they can be administered. This, even as the daily vaccine uptake reduces from the daily COVID vaccines, uh, reduced from 1,000 people to 50 people. In an interview with the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, the COVID Vaccine Tax Force Chair, Dr. Willis Ahwale, said a multi-institutional research is being conducted on the vaccines and a report will be issued by next week on their usability. Johnson & Johnson vaccine, when frozen, the shelf life is two years. We had about one million doses that had been thawed, means they were not frozen. They had been removed from freezing. Now, the shelf life of the third vaccine has been reviewed by WHO and we have got information that uh, this shelf life, shelf life is likely to be extended beyond the 4.5 months earlier. While expressing concern on the low number of Kenyans getting vaccinated, Ahwale warned that the cold season between April and June might see an increase in the positivity rate. Nairobi, Nyeri and Kakamega are still the leading counties in vaccine uptake, even though the numbers have dropped. The low uptake is now across the country. But we are also uh, concerned, of course, with the north, um, the counties in the arid and semi-arid lands but also counties with high populations, both in central, eastern, and, and western Kenya, that are not um, doing as well as we had expected. Dr. Lois Mutai, a medical superintendent at Mbagadi Hospital, attributed this to decrease in positivity rate. And uh, that our isolation unit, the 160 bed capacity, has not been put to a lot of use, but whenever there have been COVID patients, we've kept them there. Uh, up to the end of last week, we had only one COVID patient in the unit. But before then, about three weeks ago, uh, there was cholera outbreak in Nairobi and there was need for isolation. To address this, the government will collaborate with counties to enhance awareness on the need for vaccines to ensure the 8 million doses available do not go to waste. For Prime Edition, I'm Zainab Said. Let's stay with health affairs. The Minister of Health has launched three policy documents on menstrual hygiene management and urban sanitation guidelines. The documents contain a framework that will enable the improvement of hygiene and sanitation in schools and urban areas. Nancy Okwari reports. In 2017, a report by UNICEF placed Kenya among 26 countries in the world responsible for 90% of open defecation. Five years later, the Kenyan government is moving to change the narrative. The Minister of Health on Tuesday launched three additional policy documents to provide a framework for the implementation of sanitation and hygiene interventions. The documents include the Hygiene Promotion in Schools Handbook, a handbook on menstrual hygiene management in schools that will remedy challenges girls face when menstruating. The menstrual hygiene management in schools, again a handbook for teachers, reinforcing learning 
and also acting as a reference guide for teachers, such that it will remedy the various challenges that school girls face while menstruating, and will work towards the provision of factual information to break the silence in terms of myths, taboos, beliefs, and misconceptions. The Kenya National Guidelines for Implementation of Urban Sanitation Document was also launched and will help provide direction on safe disposal of fecal sludge in urban areas and sanitation planning under urban development. These guidelines will ensure that development plans for urban areas have inbuilt sanitation components and sanitation systems that are designed and managed safely to protect human health from microbial hazards caused by human excreta and the consequent advanced health outcomes that come out of that. What are we going to do really truly when it comes to implementation? And we know, and we know, I think as county governments, we know you have to have the resources in place. Nancy Okwari, Prime Edition. That story brings us to our first break right here on KBC Prime Edition. Absolutely. And on Kenya Decides tonight, Safina Cheng Oma speaks about media security and election from Norfolk. She'll be joining us live or she'll be coming to us live from Norfolk Hotel. You do not want to miss that. Business news and sports as well. Stay with us. among the dispossessed. Prince Philip also opened the new independent parliament. The occasion obviously enjoyed by... Besides acknowledging the legacy which Britain leaves, Kenya has elected to remain within the Commonwealth. After Prince Philip had read the speech from the throne, Mr. Kenyatta was to express his hopes for a happy continuation of the special relationship Kenya has always had with Great Britain. We can build in Kenya, he said, a country in which race, tribe, colour or creed form no barrier. This was certainly the theme of the state ball. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Ili kupata mafuta kupanda kama skiza tun kwenye simu yako, bonyeza star 811 star 397 hash e, na sukuru serikali kwa kuongeza bei ya mafuta saini kwa kwa highway na kuna traffic kata kidogo naomba serikali endelee hivyo tubaki tu watu ya gasla na heavy machine peke yake pia mimi naomba huyu serikali waseme kama gari yako ni below 3000 cc gari yako ili kupata kibari. mafuta kupanda kama skiza tun bonyeza star 811 star 397 hash the star 811 star star 397 hash Welcome back. Five people were last night killed at Mweromalia village in Meru County. The raid is believed to be a revenge attack by Somali camel herders from the neighboring Isiolo County after locals killed 10 camels that had invaded their farms earlier during the day. The irate locals barricaded the Isiolo Muriri Road, protesting laxity by police as the attackers terrorized locals for hours. Beatrice Gatonye has the report. Residents of Meromalia village in Meru lamented over the government's failure to beef up security in the area as promised during the requiem mass for seven other people who were killed in the neighboring Meronkoro village two months ago. They complained that the security agencies had not done enough in tracking down the killers 
arguing that owners of the slain camels had earlier visited the scene in the company of local government administrators and an area police boss and warned of dire consequences following the killing of the camels. Last time, we were in Morongoro, we were in Last week, we were in Mzozo. 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 Eh, watu wangamia waliambua siingie meru tena. Last time wakati tulikuwa mkutano ya Morongoro wakati watu sabu waliwawa, eh, county commissioner na pia mbugwa na governor wetu kiraitu Morongi. Alisema mkamia zita ingia tena kwa hii boda, kwa, kwa boda ya meru. Hezron Mageria Dhambura, a village resident and relative to one of the deceased persons, also accused the government of disarming Kenya police reservists from the meru side a few years ago, while a similar disarmament exercise was not conducted in the neighboring Isiolo. Tumapoteza watu wengi, watu ambao kabisa awakuwa nafaa kupoteza maisha yao, kutokea na kitendo cha kiunyama kilitondeka hapo usiku na niombi letu serikali iweze kutimiza maadi ambayo imetuwekea kwa muda mrefu the irate locals called on area leaders to stop politicking and instead address security situation in the region that is deteriorating by day tunaomba serikali ichukue hatua iacte on hii uh, maneno na imalize mara moja kwa sababu tunahitaji amani na kama hakutakuwa na um, awata intervene hakutakuwa na amani hii area Beatriz Getonyenge Teach Prime Edition and we hope no mercy shall be restored in that area in other news, it is a county synonymous with tea and one surrounded by hills. It has placed Kenya on the world map in terms of tea production. In tonight's edition of County Fact File, we take a look at County Code 035 Kericho. Tea country as it were, this is Kiricho County code number 35, the area that has significantly contributed in making Kenya the third world largest tea producer. Agriculture is the main source of livelihood in Kiricho County, with tea as the cash crop contributing more than 80% of household incomes and employees over 50% of the county's population. Some of the largest tea companies, including Unilever Kenya, James Finley, and Williamson Tea, are based there. It is also home to the popular Ketepa brand. The county is surrounded by a number of hills such as Tinderet Hills to the north, Mau Escarpment and Lundiani Hills. A good number of rivers emanate from the county including Chamosit, Kipteret, Kipsonoi, Timbilil, Maramara, Itare, Nyando, Kipchorian and Malage. Kericho is among 14 counties located in the former Rift Valley province. The county borders Western Gishu County to the northwest, Baringo County to the north, Nandi County to the northwest, Nakuru County to the east, and Bumet County to the south. The county has a population of 901,777 as part of the 2019 Housing and Population Census, with the county headquarters based in Kericho Town. There are six sub counties, 30 electoral wards, 85 locations, and 209 sub locations. The county has six constituencies with 375,668 registered voters and 780 polling stations. The constituencies are Ainamoi, Belgut, Bureti, Kipkeleon East, Kipkeleon West, and Sigowet Soin constituency. Paul Kiprono Chepkoni is the governor serving his second and final term in office after being elected both in 2013 and 2017. County 035. Well, that brings us to our second break right here on KBC Prime. Mm -hmm. We still have plenty more coming up, including business and sports. Also, Kenya decides tonight. Premiers Safina Chiang hosting um, Victor Bure, Director of uh, the Media Council of Kenya, Eric Oduor, Secretary General Kenya, Union of Journalists, as well as Hutton Irungu, Executive Director, Amnesty International. You don't want to miss that. We're taking a short break. We'll be back shortly.
Na bonga na watu wa ikuju wa mambo za online Pia na kreta fanye vitu offline Tungeni gadgets na sites wana use Si watch strangers wapate chance kuwa abuse Nimeshindaje peso kwa mpesi ja participate Unadai info yangu na ikwe private ife Identity yangu haupati ya utumi Nizi zangu ni zangu na bata ntazi shikilia Una postori ya kini real news Mili siku wa menye mbaka ni one so sales of this Una ntex only to me to run free Stati jokes ama minta kuripot for real Wazazi, watu wa ina maitu wetu. Don't be fooled. Get cyber smart and enjoy safe entertainment and education online. The Communications Authority of Kenya. Mawasiliano kwetu, guvu kwako. Hizi chagua katia kakangu na mpenzi wangu. Mama, are you really okay? There's nothing you can say to change what I feel. Sinja kuja hapa kukua ni mekumis. Naona utazipata hizo tabu sana. Chana kujipendekeza kwa mungi wangu. Umimaliza? Oh, okay. Olympia Stadion in Berlin is now less crowded with only four teams out of 64 still in contention. Something more outstanding is that all of the sides to have won the DFB Pokal over the last 29 years are already out this year. And Leverkusen are knocked out by a Bundesliga two side. In the first DFB Pokal semi-final, Hamburger SV will face Freiburg on Tuesday, the 19th of April 2022 at 9.45 p.m. While in the second semi-final, RB Leipzig will lock horns with Union Berlin on Wednesday, the 20th April 2022 at 9.45 p.m. Having braced the turbulent journey and buoyed up with the trophy in sight, no team want to go down without a fight. You don't want to miss this adventurous football show live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Welcome back. Well, as we had indicated to you, Safina Chiang is right across broadcasting house at Fairmount Norfolk Hotel. And our show, Kenya Decides, premiering tonight. Safina Chiang hosting a number of guests. And the topic mm, tonight absolutely. is... Media security and elections. Safin, it's good to speak with you. I know there are a lot of issues to discuss, especially on the freedom of media and media coverage ahead of the August elections. Maybe you can bring us to speed on what we expect from the premier show, Kenya Decides, tonight. Indeed, a very good evening to you. They are back in studio, Purity Museo and uh, Tom Boyer. We are coming to you live from Fairmont, the Norfolk Hotel, for the premiere episode of Kenya Decides, a special political program by the state broadcaster, KBC Channel One, that is dedicated to setting the agenda ahead of the 2022 general election. We, will, we are going every Tuesday from 10 to 11 p.m. to be having constructive debates that will help Kenyans make informed decisions on who is going to be part and parcel of the next crop of leadership in the next five years. So every Tuesday we promise you an informative conversation, a program that is going to enlighten you on what is your role 
as a voter. We are going to be starting tonight. They say charity begins at home. So we are going to be starting here by talking about media, media security, security and, and elections. I'm going, I'm going to be, be having a panel, a panel of three stakeholders, stakeholders in the media, media industry, industry uh, who, who are representing, representing the voice of the media and, and what, what has been done to ensure that, that members, members of the fourth estate play, play their role professionally, professionally and, stay and stay safe while at it. I'll be having a sit down with Victor Buire, the director of media training and development at the Media Council of Kenya and of course Eric Odwar, the Secretary General of the Kenya Union of Journalists and we're also going to be joined by Irungu Hilton, the Executive Director of Amnesty International here in Kenya. It's a program like no other Purity and Tom so our viewers can of course expect a lot from us as Team Kenya decides. It's now back to you in studio. So every Tuesday between 10 and 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. and they'll be tackling issues around leadership, the role of voters, mm. as we head towards the general poll in August 9th. And tonight we begin, as Safin says, that charity begins at home, the role of media as the fourth estate, of course, the role of media cannot be underestimated. Looking forward to that conversation from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. That's right. Azimio Laumoja presidential candidate Raila Odinga has promised to transform the port of Mombasa into a free port in order to spur economic activities in the country. He was speaking in Mombasa when he issued Orange Democratic Movement Party aspirants for various seats nomination certificates. Mombasa gubernatorial candidate Abdul Swamad Sharif once again pledged to work together with Suleiman Shabal who abandoned his quest for the gubernatorial seat in favor of Sharif. focus on a business matters my name is Caroline Jenger coffee trading might be disrupted um, if the new coffee 2022 regulations are gazetted in their current form among other regulations fronted by the Food and Agriculture Authority is removing the coffee broker licensing from the capital markets authority that has so far licensed a number of brokers this emerged during a public participation forum in Nairobi marked by disruption after some farmers of the meeting. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> Thank you. 
Is that the story? Without say paying one uh, one Kenya billion shillings, where do these farmers get the one billion? The Agriculture and Food Authority say there's need for more negotiations before the payment system is put in place to ensure prompt payment of farmers, and it's against farmers being paid directly, rather preferring payment through cooperatives. So all coffee sales from the auction floor will be deposited in accounts farmers have conveyed or the coffee estate farmers have given. So I don't see any complexity. It's only that it's a new idea and the change is normal. It says being a facility should not hold the farmer's money even at a given point. The money, once the money hits the system, it's supposed to ensure that all the deductions that are supposed to be made are made and the money is sent immediately to the farmer's account. The coffee bill is currently at the Senate after undergoing a third reading in the National Assembly with another government-sponsored bill still at the first reading in the National Assembly. Benson Ruba reporting for Prime Edition. You are likely to experience delays when clearing imported goods after contracts uh, with the Kenya Bureau of Standards had with the third-party companies to undertake pre-inspection of goods expired. This means imported goods with exception from motor vehicles, spare parts, consolidated goods and goods on transit to other countries are from the beginning of this month being inspected at points of entry into Kenya. Kenya Bureau of Standards Managing Director Bernard Njiriaini says this is temporary situation as the agency shops for pre-shipment inspectors. While the burden of proof of conformance to standards lies with the importer, the situation is bound to get tougher for local players as the Kenya Bureau of Standards is yet to recruit pre-shipment inspectors following the expiry of contracts of previous dealers as at the end of March. Today the contracts of the partners undertaking inspection of general goods legally ended on that first March 2022. Hence, the application of destination inspection in the interim as a contingency plan. This means all inspection of most imported goods is being done at points of entry in Kenya. The pre-shipment inspectors were meant to help first in the cargo clearance process by having the officially appointed dealers inspect and issue certificates of conformity. We are very much aware that uh, for us to be competitive as a country, we have to reduce the logistic cost and goods delaying at the port will generally uh, increase the cost of goods. So we are very much aware of that and that is why we will do targeting. Targeting for those risky products, test them and also uh, ensure that we use documentation. This is a common practice uh, world over where, you know, manufacturers are expected to issue certificate of analysis, test reports, and it's on that basis that we use those documents to verify and indicate that. Effective beginning of this month, there's a likelihood that importers will experience delays clearing their cargo at points of entry. We have not yet concluded this process, but we are looking forward to having six uh, PVUC partners uh, to work with us. Uh, we, we, the process is ongoing. We, we, in less than a month, we'll probably have new contracted partners. The Kenya Bureau of Standards is shopping for pre-shipment inspectors. In the interim, KEBS has directed that all general goods be subjected to inspection at the point of entry with exception of motor vehicles, mobile equipment, spare parts, consolidated goods and goods on transit to other countries. Regina Manyara reporting for Prime Edition. 
The government is investigating fuel marketing companies that increased pump prices during the three-week fuel supply crisis witnessed in the country and is urging you to report any petrol station selling fuel above the recommended price. Acting Petroleum and Mining Cabinet Secretary Monica Juma says the Directorate of Criminal Investigations is probing fuel marketers that did not maintain the minimum operational stocks, sold fuel at exorbitant prices or were holding petroleum products. The three-week fuel shortage saw motorists spend long hours in queues to get the commodity while some petrol stations turned away customers due to lack of fuel. Some fuel marketing companies took advantage of the situation and were selling fuel above the recommended price. It also emerged that some dealers were reselling the petroleum products bought from major oil marketing company stations with a litre going as high as 300 shillings. And today, the Ministry of Petroleum and Mining says it is investigating fuel marketing companies that increased fuel prices above the recommended price during that period. The Directorate of Criminal Investigations is pursuing fuel marketers that did not maintain the minimum operational stocks or were holding petroleum products. The Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, IPRA, is also set to take stern action on four petrol stations who offered petroleum for sale above the recommended price. The petrol stations are located at Migori, Kehancha, Awendo and Isabania respectively. Kenyans have also been urged to report petrol stations selling fuel above the recommended prices. This comes even as the ministry underscores resumption of the fuel supply in the country. Acting Petroleum and Mining Cabinet Secretary Monica Juma says Kenya Pipeline Company has 120 million litres of super petrol and 212 million litres of diesel. Health Chief Administrative Secretary Dr. Rashid Aman says technology, digitization and data is key in supporting the efficient use of existing financing, mobilization of additional financing and improving healthcare delivery and outcomes. Dr. Aman says even though the government has employed the use of technology in scaling up of health coverage, more needs to be done to avail health coverage to those in the informal sector and remote areas. Kenya's journey towards automating health services has been a steady work in progress. To discuss the cutting-edge catalytic role of digital innovations in healthcare financing and advancing the universal health coverage agenda in Kenya, healthcare stakeholders have converged to further strengthen Kenya health system. The telecommunications sector is a key enabler to the country's economic growth. This is evidenced by increased government use of information and communications technology in the provision of e-government services like e-education and now the famous e-citizen. We know that where physical presence is difficult due to lack of adequate specialists or other challenges that is in the health sector, technology would provide a perfect bridge to healthcare services connecting healthcare workers to patients. Healthcare stakeholders from the private sector as well as the national and county governments converged in Nairobi to deliberate on Kenya's digital health innovation towards the universal health coverage. Digital innovations promote efficient delivery in three key healthcare financing principles of USC. First, reduced out-of-pocket expenditure. Secondly, accumulation and management of prepaid funds, i.e. pooling of funds, and thirdly, strategic purchasing of health services. They said digital technology can mobilize additional financing for health, scale health coverage to those who have been excluded from the health system, and improve healthcare delivery and outcomes. Just to be able to reiterate some of the key issues that uh, have been brought so far, I think one issue that came up was the issue about technology helping us uh, in poverty mapping. And this really focuses on the poor of the poorest, you know, who are at the bottom. So it helps us to identify so that we are able to catch the right fish. Farm Access used the event to mark its 20th anniversary, with Wasuna saying the organization has contributed to strengthening Kenya's healthcare system by leveraging data and technology to support various initiatives on health financing and delivery. Reporting for Prime Edition, I am Dutamo Kame. 
And that story brings to a close business news for tonight, but you can find more stories on our website at kbc.co.ke. Richard Munga is up next with a sports update. My name is Caroline Jenger. See you tomorrow for more business news. Good evening and thank you for joining us for tonight's edition of KBC Sports Update with me, Richard Munga. Now, President Uru Kenyatta says the government is committed to supporting people living with disabilities, shape their careers and achieve their dreams in sports. Uru choose the flag of Team Kenya ahead of the 24th Summer Olympics slated for May 1st to the 15th in Brazil. The first batch of the contingent will leave the country on Thursday, while the second batch will leave on Saturday ahead of the global showpiece. Speaking at State House Nairobi, President Huru Kenyatta noted that the government is at the forefront to ensure that they promote sporting activities in Kenya as an investment to the future generations. Today, you prove that in Kenya, disability is not inability. You will join the ranks of your abled brothers and sisters who have brought pride to this country and I am certain as Ambassador Amina has said that you too shall not fail in bringing pride to your country. The contingent of 124 athletes is optimistic of staging a good show in the global showpiece. Kenya Your Excellency is sending 124 athletes uh, who will take part in five different disciplines athletics, basketball, golf, handball, and football competitions? And Your Excellency, you remember that there was uh, one of us who won one of the golf competitions and you actually awarded him a uh, golf kit. Team Kenya will be out to defend the men's 5,000 meters and men's 1,500 meters races. Kenya will participate in various disciplines, excluding badminton team, which won't travel after failing to take part in the World Championship and Africans Championship, which acted as a qualifier event. Simon Cherono Kibai will be looking forward to maintain a stellar performance in the men's 10 kilometers with Beryl Otieno eyeing the 200 meters gold medal. The first batch of the contingent will depart to Brazil on Thursday this week, while the second will leave the country on Saturday. For Prime Edition Sports, I'm Daniel Mwendo. Well, as always, thank you, Daniel Mwendo, for that report. Now, meanwhile, the road to Birmingham 2022 club games have begun in earnest following a colorful launch of the 100 Days Countdown to the Quadrennial Commonwealth Games event by NOC, the body charged with its preparations. The day was celebrated as different martial arts uh, teams rather showcased their talents, with gymnastics being the showstopper following the recent visit by the International Gymnastics Federation president this past weekend. The day is observed with anticipation and excitement as Kenya and its leads count down to the games to use the platform to once again stamp global sporting prowess and showcase their depth of talent. Preparations are in top gear according to NOC and NOC hopes that and NOP hopes that the team will make a major improvement from the last club games in Gold Coast in 2018, where Kenya managed 17 medals. The launch of the 100 days the Commonwealth Games gives momentum to all stakeholders, while enhancing the focus and build-up towards the celebration of another global sporting bonanza. You all know that uh, every time that you step on that podium, be it uh, you are number three, be it uh, the team sport, you are number four, three or four, or even number one, you are all carrying the aspirations and the excitement of all Kenyans. Now, also the final day of the Kenyan 
Open uh, Chess Championship at the Luke Hotel produced another four-way tie at the top with Uganda's Harold Wenyama winning the title on tie break with 7.5 points after defeating compatriot Patrick Awomo of Victor Bank Kenya in the open section of 150 players. Wenyama, who was seated third, won bronze medal for Uganda in the 12th African Games Rapid Chess section in 2019 that were held in Rabat, Morocco. Pre-tournament favorite international master Arthur Seguani of Uganda had a disastrous outing, finishing the in the overall, in the ladies' section of 40 players, Kenya's Teresa Mwendo Muredi caused the major upset to emerge sole winner after upsetting compatriot world amateur women silver medalist Joyce Nirango of KCB to finish on seven points and pocket 80,000 shillings. And globally, Barcelona suffered a shock home La Liga defeat by relegated threatened Cadiz to leave uh, leaders Real Madrid closer to clinching.